As I mentioned, Tom didn't say anything about the weather, but he had on a long, heavy overcoat. And he did write that he decided, and I don't know why, maybe it would be more comfortable, he decided before he mounted up, he was going to take the coat off. So he took the, the heavy coat off, threw it over the back of his saddle, already had his left hand on the pommel, getting ready to swing the right leg over, and a federal mini ball entered his left side, penetrated to about the navel area, hit something, deflected, and exited his back a fraction of an inch from his spine. And in 19th century medical knowledge, a wound like that, there's nothing surgeons can do for you. So Tom's lying there in the mud. He had a pocket watch that belonged to his father. He quickly gave that to one of his comrades before they scampered away or they would end up in a federal prison. And a couple he gave his carbine to another. So he, here he is. He's lying in the mud waiting to die. And who knows how many federal cavalry troopers had ridden by Tom. And there was one in the 16th Pennsylvania Cavalry. I don't know if he saw Tom move, but he rode over to Tom and he dismounted. And he got down on his hands and knees and put some water on a handkerchief and patted Tom's hand, and it, or his head rather, and he saw that, you know, this guy is still alive. I mean, it looks pretty bad, but he's still alive. So the, the trooper from Pennsylvania, and I can't use his name because Tom Colley never knew the man's name. That probably saved his life. He had few regrets, Tom, but that was a big one. He spent the rest of his life trying to find the man who saved his life so he could shake his hand, get to know his name, and say thank you and he was never able to do so.